Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking about one of the overlooked yet highly common causative factors in male pattern baldness or hair loss in general. And that is the accumulation of inflammatory prostaglandins in the scalp. All right guys, so as always, let's do a little bit of groundwork and clear up this terminology and talk about what a prostaglandin is. So although very complex sounding or complicated, a prostaglandin, very simply put, is a physiologically active chemical in the body. It is actually a hormone like lipid or fat that is produced by the body, typically during stress, injury, or inflammation. In fact, it's known that whenever there's trauma, stress, or injury to an area, that there is an increased accumulation to the localized site or area of these inflammatory prostaglandins, specifically prostaglandin E2, as we talked about in an earlier video, and prostaglandins D2. So what happens physiologically or biologically speaking is that when there is inflammation or injury to an area, let's say the scalp is injured because it's not getting enough energy, so it's stressed out, or let's say you even cut yourself, what tends to happen during that inflammation is there's an increased oxidation of an essential fatty acid known as arachidonic acid. And this is broken down into inflammatory prostaglandins. And these prostaglandins activate enzymes in the cyclooxygenase pathways, which are inflammatory pathways that lead to inflammation and ultimately pain. So because of this well-known physiological process, oftentimes COX-2 inhibitors and things that inhibit prostaglandins are used to treat inflammation and pain related disorders and with great success most of the time. However, most conventional COX-2 inhibitors and anti-inflammatory drugs like non-steroidal anti-inflammatories come with nasty negative side effects. But there are natural things that you can do to inhibit the production of these inflammatory prostaglandins and the activation of this pathway that we'll talk about in the end of this video. But before we go there, let's get back to how prostaglandins contribute to hair loss and male pattern baldness. If we take a quick look at this study done in, I think, 2012 by Garza, it was discovered that in the scalps of balding men, that there was an increased accumulation of the inflammatory D2 prostaglandins, which inhibited hair growth. And in fact, there's extensive research done on the inhibitory effect of the prostaglandins on the hair shaft, meaning that they inhibit good hair growth through numerous mechanisms. For example, as I talked about in the video on mast cells, prostaglandins contribute to the degranulation of mast cells, which can lead to fibrosis and scarring of the scalp. Prostaglandins can also activate estrogen, a major inhibitor to good hair growth, as well as directly interfere with mitochondrial energy production. So in a very nasty, vicious cycle, prostaglandins inhibit hair growth pretty much across the board. So they can directly lead to the inflammation of the scalp. They can even lead to the scarring or the fibrosis of the scalp. They can also stimulate the production of estrogen and estrogen inhibits hair growth through a couple of different mechanisms, but mostly by stealing oxygen from the mitochondria leading to a condition known as hypoxia, which is an inflammatory state or stress state of the cell. So estrogen can literally starve your hair follicles of oxygen, which it needs to produce energy and to grow and stay alive. But estrogen also tends to directly oppose the function of the thyroid. And it largely does so by stealing oxygen from the cells where the major job of thyroid hormone is to deliver oxygen from the cell. So it's very opposing or it's an opponent like hormone to thyroid hormone. And thyroid hormone is the major regulator of hair growth, which is likely why, as I always say, hair loss is one of the major symptoms of low thyroid function because you need the thyroid hormone for the hair follicle to produce energy, to get oxygen, to oxidize glucose, to make ATP and ultimately give itself the energy it needs to grow and to stay alive and be resilient. So this is often why hair loss is one of the major symptoms of low thyroid function. And if we tie all this information together, this just goes to show us further that hair loss is a symptom of inflammation and inflammation is typically a byproduct of oxidative stress. So as I explain pretty frequently in the videos regarding hair loss, the simplified version of the pathogenesis of hair loss is that there's oxidative stress to the cell, meaning the hair follicle cells cannot get adequate energy, causing them to experience oxidative stress. When that's prolonged and chronic, there's inflammation, and that inflammation can ultimately 
lead to the scarring or the death or the degradation of the hair follicle. And prostaglandins are just one of the major biomarkers that there is definitely some sort of inflammation occurring in the scalp where there is baldness and hair loss in general. In the accumulation of prostaglandins in the scalps of balding men, again as seen in this study, is just one very good biomarker or indicator that in the scalps of balding men or men losing their hair, that there's inflammation occurring. Now the good news in all this is that we have really good clues as to how to start correcting hair loss or even preventing the so-called male pattern baldness. And two major clues that are drawn from this evidence and this research is that if we inhibit the overaccumulation of prostaglandins, we can also inhibit the activation of the inflammatory COX-2 pathway and therefore prevent any inflammation and damage done to the scalp. Which is another way of saying that reducing or inhibiting systemic inflammation could be very protective to the hair shaft and help you preserve your hair follicles in your hair and possibly even start the regenerative process. But instead of just giving you a list of anti-inflammatory herbs, I wanna narrow in on some of these major mediators of scalp inflammation, which again is the accumulation of prostaglandins D2 and the activation of the cyclooxygenase inflammatory pathways. With that being said, I have a couple of tips for you as to how to do this. So I wanna start off with some of the more broad range or systemic solutions or tips and then get into a couple of scientifically proven herbs that inhibit the prostaglandins and the cyclooxygenase pathways. So starting off, perhaps one of the best things that you could do to lower the total accumulation of the prostaglandins in the scalp and the activation of the COX pathways would be to inhibit or reduce your intake of some of the building blocks to these substances. So as I mentioned in the first part of this video, prostaglandins are breakdown products of arachidonic acid. And arachidonic acid is made of or comprised largely of linoleic acid, one of the unsaturated fatty acids that you find in things like corn, wheat, canola, soybean oil, and most vegetable oils. So to summarize all of that in a couple of words, Polyunsaturated fats, like the ones I just mentioned, are highly inflammatory and can contribute to the formation of prostaglandins, which tend to accumulate in the scalps of baldy men, leading to hair loss and inhibiting good hair growth. So avoiding those would be a great way to lower total systemic inflammation and reduce the likelihood of the prostaglandin D2 accumulating in the scalp. And while we're on this subject, I just wanna kind of branch off and talk really quick about omega-3 fatty acids, particularly from fish oil. These are highly confused as promoters of hair growth and anti-inflammatory supplements because they have one mechanism, which is that they do interfere with the production of prostaglandins. So in a sense, they are anti-inflammatory by interfering with prostaglandin production. However, the omega-3 fatty acids in fish oil increase the production of an enzyme known as tryptophan hydroxylase, which rapidly converts tryptophan into serotonin. And despite what many people have been told, serotonin is not a beneficial neurochemical for good health. In fact, it has an opposite effect and is definitely implicated in hair loss by stimulating the production of cortisol, estrogen, prolactin, and aldosterone, which are four major hormones that tend to be elevated in hair loss. So although they, in one sense, seem to be beneficial for reducing inflammation, maybe they'll help with hair loss by preventing the accumulation of prostaglandins. On a broader range, they're more likely to be rancid, first of all, and increase the production of all the various stress hormones that are implicated in hair loss. So ultimately, they're probably doing more harm than good. And there also happens to be safer ways to reduce the production of the inflammatory prostaglandins without the potential major risk of increasing serotonin, cortisol, estrogen, prolactin, etc., by taking omega-3 fish oils which are also incredibly expensive and again, tend to be of low quality just due to their unstable chemical nature. And this leads us to our next couple of tips, which is a few scientifically backed herbs for lowering prostaglandins. So there are a couple of different herbs that are known to inhibit the production of prostaglandins, therefore having a safe anti-inflammatory effect. One of the first ones is gonna be nettle root. The second one is ginkgo biloba. Aside from that, ginger, turmeric, in herbs like boswellia, or boswellia, however you want to pronounce it, are all clinically proven to lower prostaglandins and inhibit the inflammatory cyclooxygenase pathways. And in addition to all of those herbs, there are a few simple and safe supplements for inhibiting the formation of prostaglandins, specifically coconut oil, 
vitamin E and vitamin K2 are all great anti-inflammatories that inhibit prostaglandin formation and inhibit the cyclo 2 oxygenase pathway. So in summary, hair loss is not just some genetic fate. Even if you are more predisposed to experiencing hair loss, that doesn't have to be the case. The likelihood of hair loss is in direct proportion to your state of stress and your ability to adapt to and resist stress. So I look at hair loss more specifically as a maladaptive response to stress. Like other age-related disorders or diseases, it's something that can be massively accelerated by your lifestyle choices, your dietary choices, and your ability to cope with stress. And on the other hand, it's something that can be greatly retarded, slowed, or entirely inhibited by those same factors. So even, again, if you're predisposed to it, that doesn't mean it has to be your fate. For example, as an analogy, you could be born with zero dollars, but if you're smart with your money, you could end up a millionaire. Whereas another person could be born as a millionaire, but be irresponsible with their money and end up poor. So I think that's a simple but pretty good analogy for understanding this. For those of you that may think that, you know, there's nothing you can do about your condition, there are definitely things that you can do about the condition. And, you know, all these videos are just designed and intended to help you see that and get some practical tips for taking control of your biology. However, that does bring this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also remember if you're dealing with any sort of hair loss and you're not finding that any of the conventional or natural remedies are providing any help, remember we have an online course titled Forever Healthy Hair. You can find on our Wellness Academy. It's very popular amongst our subscribers here on the channel. It's something that I've been using with my clients for a couple of years that have helped a lot of people. I've gotten tons of good feedback on it. It's based on a more physiological approach to correcting hair loss, not the whole DHT and genetic myths, but something that can actually provide you with pragmatical, practical steps to not just correct the hair loss, but improve your overall health too. Remember, hair loss tends to just be a symptom of chronic stress and inflammation or accelerated aging in a sense, which is largely mediated by stress. So if you're interested in that course, be sure to check that out and join the rest of the people here taking that course and enjoying it. Again, you can find that in the description box below. Otherwise, we have tons of videos here on the channel that give a very thorough uh, science-backed approach to correcting the issue and understanding it for what it actually is as opposed to, again, biased opinions. So definitely be sure to browse the other videos here on the channel. We have a blog that you can check out for tons of free information and resources. And if you're interested in taking any of those natural anti-inflammatory inhibitors of the prostaglandins, be sure to check out our online tonic herb shop for those as well. All of this, again, you can find in the description box below.